Hey everyone, it's CJ here from Red Muscle, and today we're going to be discussing the three main areas that you need to focus on with your rugby strength and conditioning. So one thing that makes rugby such an amazing sport is the huge blend of physical challenges that are placed upon you know you simply to hold your own in a game i find it kind of funny in a way that the sport is kind of like seen as an inclusive sport because of the shapes and the sizes when in reality is actually one of the most physically demanding and i know this is more a reflection of like the inclusive culture and whatnot but i also think there's something there about the diverse range of traits that are required for you to you know, be effect, be an effective rugby player and all the different ways that you can go about solving that, but also all of the different demands that are placed upon you as a player. And so the big question, <laughs> big, big, yeah. but uh-huh. doing the bening, doing the bening, to even begin bening? In the beninging, in the, in the bening, in the beninging. Where to even begin? So before I answer this question, I want to ask you to like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment any questions you have, um, do do both of those things, please. It it really does help. Um, obviously, subscribe if you're new. I notice a lot of viewers on this channel uh, aren't actually subscribers. So if you want to get the best information about training, nutrition, strength and conditioning, recovery, all things rugby, physical preparation and performance, and you know mostly for amateurs mostly for guys that don't earn a living doing this and i'd say mostly like 99.999 percent of my stuff is geared towards those sorts of people subscribe and give it a thumbs up it really does help out i also know that i've taken a couple weeks off from making any videos on this channel but that is because i've been really working on the rugby muscle academy and producing everything we've got over there so we've got training camp we've got kickoff Lots of different ways that you can interact with rugby muscle, interact with me, and I'll put all of that stuff in the links below. Okay, so where to begin? To me, this makes sense to begin with the rugby physical preparation pyramid. This was coined by your boy here. um, After over a decade of working with rugby athletes of all levels and seeing the physical abilities and qualities that make the biggest difference come game day, it made sense to me to put this thing together. It's also backed up by the science, I guess, on the demands of rugby. And the, you know, it just makes sense, not just as a guide to give you direction with your training, but as an explanation as to why some players have some, find some success and why others don't. And because rugby will attract the big blokes due to the physical collision nature of the sport, it also attracts people who consider themselves really fit, again, because of the challenge it presents. So, both of these athletes will have a faster rise to and longer period of relative success compared to their counterparts who might not possess these physical attributes. And that's why we start with these three things as the base of the pyramid. Uh, The physical fitness foundation of your success as a rugby player will rely on these three traits. Not only do they allow you to be a better player on the pitch, but they also potentiate further development and success. So training them is like kind of exponential growth we've touched on this before but it's you know you know where you can just get a unit of input but you also get more than one unit of output back at you because you can grow and grow and grow upon the foundations that you're building that's why it's the base of the pyramid and that's why you need to train these components so let's get into them first and foremost you have aerobic capacity i've done several videos now on the importance of aerobic fitness for rugby and if you're really curious you should go watch those videos and podcasts but i can give a quick explanation here because that's the point of this video contrary to popular belief rugby is supported by the aerobic system it's also fueled by the aerobic system it isn't a game where you work as hard as possible for like 10 5 to 10 15 minute segments without stopping it's not at all like that it's much more five to ten second segments of intense action surrounded by periods of very very minimal activity 19 to 95 percent of a rugby game is spent walking standing still jogging striding but not just that because on top of that you're also breathing the whole time you're breathing heavily to recover from your last intense action 
and to prepare for your next intense action. This is done with the aerobic system. It's breathing. It's what you're supposed to do. It's what you need to do to support all of your actions. And I've spoken in previous videos, like I say, on how just massively beneficial uh, to your performance aerobic training is, but it's also beneficial to your actual training too. The better your aerobic fitness, the more you can train without getting too gassed, the faster you'll be able to recover from your training sessions and from each individual set allowing you to progressively train more or even train other components so if you're looking for ideas for what to do with your rugby conditioning then you're in luck because in the description or show notes or whatever i'll be linking the rugby conditioning guide um, you can use a 20 percent discount with the code youtube as well as a free sample that you can pick up if you're not willing to fork out a few quid whatever it is for the conditioning guide links in the description below so like I say, aerobic conditioning is definitely something that you want to be considering to really improve, to improve yourself as a rugby player. Next on the base of the pyramid, we have hypertrophy. Just like aerobic capacity, training for hypertrophy will not only improve your performance on the pitch, but also allow your training to bet be better too. Being big isn't going to necessarily make you an amazing rugby player, but if you look at all the top players and you know, all top level pros, you see the nick that these guys are in, you surely understand that growing some muscle at least gives you the chance to be an amazing player. Even if you still suck, like a sucky player with a good amount of muscle is going to be better than a skinny, sucky player. It's just how the game works. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to guarantee you to be a better player, but it's going to give you every chance you can to succeed. Long and short, you need to gain muscle to be a physical best. But gaining muscle alone isn't necessarily going to make you the best. One thing that's important to point out here is that growing muscle is a long process. Um, outside of your newbie gains, it is actually quite a difficult thing to do. It just takes a really long time. It's a difficult, um, long process to actually build muscle tissue. Um, once again, I've got a whole playlist on exactly how you can do that. I'll put it in the links below. Um, but in many ways, like a whole playlist sort of makes it sound more complicated than it is because it's not complicated. It's just difficult. It's just like kind of nuance as well. Um, you've just got to eat and you've got to lift. And um, Bodybuilders will make it really complicated with different things like drop sets and special sets and different all these different things. But really, it's just about lifting and eating. Um, and then there are also, luckily for you, lots of different ways that lifting and eating can also benefit you outside of the process of gaining muscle. Like you can get stronger, you can become more powerful. All these different things that will help you as a rugby player also will allow you to hopefully over the long term gain muscle. Muscle equals good. And if you don't grow it, you're likely holding yourself back from your potential as a player. Final thing that will make you a better player is moving better, movement control. We all know those athletes that are kind of freaks, and if you show them one thing to do, they'll 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 get it like that. And then there are other people that take a long time to learn how to squat. This doesn't mean that this is just you've either got it or you don't. It is something you can absolutely train for. Training for jumps, training for lunges, training for moving in different ways, your squat patterns, your um, deadlift patterns, your hinge patterns, all your different movement patterns. I've made a recent video on this. Are going to help you. Um, not only stay away from your injury, but perform at your most efficient possible. If you load up and you you know get really strong, but you move poorly, once again, just like not being big enough, just like not being aerobically fit enough, you will be holding yourself back, not just from your potential as a player on the pitch, but from your potential to make extra gains as a player. And that's why these three things are on the bottom of the pyramid, that's why they're the base, that's why they hold everything up, because if you get these three things in order, you're going to be having a good time with your training, with your rugby progress, because you're, you've put the foundations in, you've got the ability to develop on this solid foundation. If you don't have these three things in order, you're only going to be holding yourself back, and you could be potentially spinning your wheels. All right, hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, if you have any questions on this stuff, it is a good thing for me because I know we're helping grow the channel and I know you guys are supporting the channel. So um, once again, put your, pop your comments, give the thumbs up if you haven't done already. That'll do it for these three things. And I know it's not like um, three specific movements that you've got to do or anything glamorous that you can do overnight. It's more of a theoretical discussion. And unfortunately, that's that's the reality of the nature of training for rugby or for training for anything. It's not, there's not like a sexy thing. There's not the three movements that you have to do. It's these three really overarching themes that you have to focus on and you have to bear in mind when you're training as a player. It doesn't mean that you have to do squats. It doesn't mean that you cannot do squats. It doesn't mean, you know, any different movement or 
uh, modality, you can justify it or you can sack it off because it doesn't work for you. What you've got to understand is that the principles are way more important. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully we don't get lots of these questions like I'm a rugby, I'm a rugby player or I'm a lock. What do I have to do? You know, that's not going to help you as a rugby player. Understanding the overarching principles of how to train, how to get the most out of yourself is what's going to help you. So like I said before, all the links are in the description below. Um, if you have any questions or if you're any, you've got a comment of any video you'd like to see from me in the future, I'd love to hear it. Pop those in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.